everybody. Thank you so much for uh, hey, checking out uh, Movies Are Dead. Uh, before we proceed with this podcast, uh, you can always check out our backlog episodes of uh, many uh, movies. I think we're at episode, what, 16, 17, or 18 or something? 13. 13, published, whatever. Yeah, published, yeah. Published. But we have so many on the back burner, yeah. it's absurd. So hopefully by the time you listen to this, there's like seven beauties is up, eight and a half. Eight and a half is up there. What else is up there? Vanilla, let's talk about the ones that are up there. Eight and a half, Vanilla Sky. Vanilla Sky, Body Double. Body Double. What else did we do? Sicario. It's not up Sicario. there yet. <laughs> it's not up yet. Faces. Faces, yeah. Faces. Kajillionaire. Kajillionaire. Our first episode. Boo. <laughs> first episode. <laughs> Why? Oh, I was just saying that. This is the first episode. I don't no, know. It's good. I'm just joking. All right. Yeah. No, thank you so much for checking out the movies are dead. I mean, we appreciate it. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, thanks, guys, for listening. Yeah. Whoever's out there into the ether. You thank you for enjoying movies, too. Don't forget to like our posts on Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> exactly. We're, hey, we're, Bordy, we're, we're, we're getting two consistent likes on Instagram, which is. Uh, oh, great. that's beautiful. Yeah. That's good to hear. Bordy, what do we, what do we, what do we, uh, what's today? What's, what, on, what, what's on the docket what, what, today? What, what, huh? what, 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 what do we, we got, got today to t- talk about? What are we doing? We're doing uh, The Matrix. Oh, The Matrix from 99 by The Wachowskis. The Wachowskis, that's right. Right. This was a big year for movies, yeah. right? I mean, according to the Brian Rafferty book um, called Best Movie Year Ever, 1999. Oh, okay. Um, you know, he wrote that book a couple of years ago, and we if got, I get the author's name wrong, I'm sorry, but uh, it's a gnarly book. I've thumbed through it ooh. before. I haven't read it, but I mean, 1999 is regarded as one of the best movies, uh, best movie years ever. We got Magnolia, American Beauty. We got Blast from the Past. Run, Lola, Run. Big Daddy. Star Wars: The Phantom Menace. Burgeoning Suicides. Yeah. Cool Intentions. Fight Club. Fight Club. The Mummy. And? Galaxy Matrix. Quest. Matrix. Wild Wild West. Was Wild Wild? I thought that was 98 for some no, reason. No, it was 99. Oh, man. I actually enjoy Wild Wild West. I remember liking it when I was a kid, yeah. Of course, yeah. I mean, Burger King sold the toys. Who, I mean, who could? I didn't get the toys, but yeah, I liked the movie. Salma Hayek. Shout out Salma. Yeah. Doing that there for us. He kind of... But yes, 1999 is regarded as one of the best movie years ever. Hopefully we do more of said 1999. Uh, but today we're checking out The Matrix, starring Keanu Reeves, Carrie Ann Moss, Lawrence Fishburne, Hugo Weaving. Hugo Weaving. Right? Mm-hmm. And how would you describe this movie, Boris? How would I describe it? Uh, it's a dystopian action thriller. I would say a dystopian action thriller. It's not I mean, a dystopian sci-fi action thriller. Yeah, and, and it's regarded as like, it's a steampunk essential. It's a steampunk classic. People love steampunk, yeah. Yeah, they love this movie, uh, the steampunk punk fans, which, I mean, over the past five years within America, the steampunk genre, anime genre, manga genre has exploded so much. Um, and, Ooh. you know, it's awesome to see, you know, to see American kids, you know, dive into the... Uh, Japanese comic world, you know, um, you know, the matrix sort of started things out. I don't know. It was one of those movies from what I remember. I saw this movie on VCR tape, but, um, you know, unfortunately I did not see it in theaters. I did see reloaded and revolutions in theaters. I remember, uh, those are the sequels. We'll get to those later. Um, but you know, I feel like the matrix body was just one of those movies that reinvented the action genre. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. you know Keanu Reeves at this time, um, you know he was already a big star. He already done like Point Break, Speed, My Private Idaho. You know, I think Johnny Mnemonic had come out. I'm not too sure, but I think so. <clears throat> An interesting thing about the casting of this movie is the, the oft-reported story that Will Smith was in consideration, but. Yeah, and Johnny Depp or something was right, like Wachowski's what, uh, first choice or something. Exactly. Yeah, Johnny Depp. Yeah, but yeah, I, mean, I think it'd be insane to make this movie by Keanu. I know. I can't see anybody else in this movie. Mm-hmm. I think this is. 
a quintessential Keanu movie. I think that Keanu needed this movie in some weird way. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, after this movie, his career took a strange turn. It felt like for like a decade plus, it felt like Keanu was on this weird track till recently, till he got John Wick going. But mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, Keanu play plays Neo. Neo is a hacker mm-hmm. in the quote unquote Matrix world. Yet he does not know that he's in the Matrix world. He comes across Trinity. Trinity, uh-huh. who pretty much convinces him to come along, follow her. Sure. And he will be freed from the Matrix. Yeah, Trinity is a sort of an envoy of Morpheus. Yes. Who's convinced that Neo is the one that will, the savior, the martyr that will save him, save human beings save in from the, real the Matrix world, from the machines. Yeah. And also, speaking of performances, this movie and this uh, call it franchise trilogy would not be the same without Lawrence Frischburn. No, it wouldn't. Just a, um, I think, perfect performance. I don't think that you could do this better. I think it's just such a pivotal it, it, yeah, character. Yeah. And he just sort of, um, what is it, has that confidence and sort of, Zen demeanor. Like you trust, you trust them. You just like, yeah, I want to follow that guy. That you guy, do. That guy's a leader for a reason, right? Yeah, and he he, it's like a fatherly figure. Mm-hmm. And you know, he played this this role in like Boys in the Hood, this very quiet, like fatherly figure that has these like sage like wisdom advice moments. Mm-hmm. But then also, Lawrence Fishburne has the potential to do something like um, Deep Cover, that undercover yeah, movie he yeah, did. Yeah. And, like, this role fits him so much, I feel. And, yeah, you're right. It would not be the same without him. Right, yeah. It's just um, the script could be difficult for certain actors to deliver the lines without sounding yeah. overly corny or or uh, out of place, whatever way you want to describe it. But he makes you believe what he's saying. He's laying out a crazy story to you that, and to Neo – that the world as you know it is not real. Not only that, there's this crazy, complex, multifaceted, actual plane of existence where machines use uh, human beings for energy. Yeah. And that the present world, 1999, which the movie is set in, is not the current timeline. Right. And yeah, it's actually 200 years in the future. Yeah. More or less. And yeah, he makes you, he sells that to you really well. In a way that if another actor would would do that role, it, you wouldn't really believe it. You wouldn't buy into the movie if you didn't buy into Morpheus. I agree. Before we get to like more of the story and like the film itself, just a little backstory about the Matrix and like just the time period this movie came out in. We did mention it's part of the quote unquote best uh, movie year ever, but also just like the state of the country and pop culture like where we were we've touched on this before in other podcasts how like the 90s was this looking back now it's just this this period of like economic upturn right and mixed in with like pop american pop culture having this like such a powerful globalization effect you know Mm -hmm. and i feel like the matrix was one of those big movies that sort of like came out of America and like took the world by hold. Yeah. You know, it kind of like just, it was everywhere. I remember. And I remember like MTV talking about it. TRL total request live with Carson mm-hmm. Daly. You know, I will always like my brain for some reason will always put those two together. It felt like young people too, of the you know, high school kids, young people like this was our action movie. You know what I mean? This right. was, this was like, everything that an action movie should be and it just i don't know it spoke so much to the sci-fi genre as well it felt like that's a good point i think uh it was one of the last times that a movie could take over the mainstream culture yeah after this i think it was only like severe it was what? it was avatar james cameron's avatar. yeah oh, okay and, and then um <laughs> not the last ever even though it should have <laughs> tv show at least yeah um but then yeah after avatar it was the, the only things that i can compare it to that culture impact is the marvel movies kind of yeah movies. yeah i don't re- i mean i count those but it feels like that's more of like a 
that came along during the internet age. Yeah, it feels different. You know, when when the Matrix came out, we were still like the internet was still an infant. You In know, a way. It, it, we didn't know the capabilities of mm-hmm. it. You know, like it, it was just this thing, and it was a pain in the butt to get on like mm-hmm. desktop computers. You had to like wait for it to load and stuff. And like this was like an era marked by like music videos. Yeah, like music videos were like king. You know, you had such great directors come out of the music video genre, like. I don't know, like Spike Jones, Mark Romanek, Michelle Gondry, mm-hmm. Anton Corbin, these guys, these directors that had such an impact on American culture. And like The Matrix, to me, will like forever be like a pop culture movie. I don't know. Yeah, it's true. It's, um, it's a weird movie to think about that just sort of came out of nowhere. Yeah. For this uh, movie, well, the Wachowski started off as screenwriters. They wrote Assassins for Richard Donner, and yeah. Richard Donner had some other screenwriter come in and completely rewrite the script. So they figured we should just actually direct our own stuff if we want to get anything made the way we intended it to. And so they made Bound, Jennifer Tilly, yeah, Gina Gershon, Joe Pantoliano. Pantoli- yeah, who's Joe also Pants. in this movie, we forgot to mention. That's right, it's great. Bound is a great movie. It's a, it's a neo-noir uh, sort of a very suspenseful. What year was that? Ninety six, I think. Okay. Uh, a really great movie, and it showed people that they could actually, you know, make a movie and have it would be. Even though it, for some reason, got mixed reviews when it came out, it's actually a great movie, and that at least got them the confidence to to write the Matrix and have it get made with a budget of what sixty seven million dollars. Yeah. Uh, Warner Brothers, is that correct? WB, yeah. And Village yeah. Roadshow, I Village think. Village Roadshow. Conjunction. And because um, this movie is, the script, the idea of it is just, it went, uh, I, it's hard to imagine that um, someone taking a chance on this right now. It's not maybe like a big screening company, a big sc- yeah, yeah. streaming company like Netflix or something like that. Because it's an original idea. Uh, when you pitch it to people, it seems complex. It seems weird. That's what I was about to say. How do you pitch to, this? Yeah, to understand. <laughs> Yeah, how do you pitch this to like a like a standard the, studio the elevator executive? pitch? What's the elevator pitch? <laughs> yeah, As they'd say in film school. Like, uh, a, yeah, like the what's it called? The an ordinary guy named what's his name? Neo. No, but like in the, in the real world, Mr. Anderson. Mr. First? Anderson. Yeah, I forgot his first name. But anyway, uh, he finds out that somehow the world he inhabits is fake, and he's actually. Uh, savior of the actual real world yeah. where human beings are being used as batteries, batteries essentially and if you tell that someone standard studio executive they're like oh, they'd probably like look at you weird about. and then laugh about you later yeah you they're know. like oh all right it's a cool idea and then they're like yeah they like make you leave fast and they laugh about you when you yeah. left so it's crazy this movie got made in the first place and the thing it does so well is make you question reality sure. as the viewer uh-huh. and I feel like one other movie around that time does that too. It's like the Truman Show. But it's a completely different movie, but it's still one of those movies where you start to look around and be like, "Okay, what's real? You know, yeah. what's not?" For some reason, I think of Lost Highway. It came out a couple of years before this. Oh yeah, Lost Highway. And then that's a uh, Mulholland yeah. Drive came out a year after this, and it sort of has that sort of dreamy feel, feel yeah. like you were talking about that. What if what am I experiencing is not actually what is actually real or happening it's something else some manipulation by some something. unseen force and it, yeah it just in this world that is um the way they present it the way the script is actually written is so it's very traditional it's very much a take on the hero's journey and uh but the way the elements are are presented to the audience are brought to you in the way that makes you really interested in what's going on and I go, yeah, fake world. Oh, yeah, machines. Oh, we're like batteries. Oh, cool. And like the audience slowly gets brought into this very complex yeah. world. It's a very, e- like, you have to use your brain for this movie at times. Sort of. Yeah. But it's very, like, hands on. It's like a video game. Sort of. Kind of. You're led into this world, you're given details, and you're like, oh, so this is the reality. This is the real world. Mm hmm. I, I like it for an action movie. It's not too dumb. It's not too smart. It's very, you know, it's it's very hands-on. 
Mm-hmm. It's not as confusing. It's not like something in set like Inception where people were confused by were it. Were they? Oh yeah, I know people that oh, actually boy. still can't get through Inception. <laughs> That's something else. I know. Yeah, I remember when Inception came out. That was a huge one. I was like, it's too confusing. It's too long. Oh, I don't get it. That was like one of the big things. But um, I mean, it's lots of money anyway, so it's fine. Yeah, yeah I guess it wasn't that confusing that people. I didn't think Inception was confusing. No, not I at all. Yeah, I don't think made the Matrix is confusing. Definitely In not. Fact, I think. I think it's probably like one of the best action sci-fi movies to incorporate drama as well. And, you know, um, some of the sequences in this movie, just how, th- how they're filmed and how they're edited and put together are great. Most notably one of the opening scenes where, where Neo is at his job in the matrix receives a FedEx package and he's given instructions, you know, just the way that's put together. He answers the phone. They're like, don't look up. Rise slowly. And he sees the agents, Hugo Weaving, mm-hmm. Weaving and company, you know, and they give him instructions. And immediately you're like, you're in the story. You're moving along, you know. Yeah, the whole story feels very, it feels metatextual in a way that the actual call to action is the actual phone call. Yeah. The refusal of the call is that, yeah, you can't, you can't, um, you can't, you know, what was Morpheus asking him to jump off the building? Not to jump off the building, you, but like. You're going to have to, like, get on a scaffolding. Yeah, you have to get on the scaffolding. Take a chance. And, and yeah, he's too scared. He's like, no, this is. And he gets arrested. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, the way the story is presented, like, this Jesus figure who is supposed to save the whole world. Yeah, the Messiah. Yeah, the Messiah who's, uh, who dies and gets brought back to life at the end. Then he can fly or something else. But, you know, it's a. Uh, it's a story that's very aware of itself, even if it's not really winking at the audience. It's a, the, the script is very, um, not obvious, not on the nose, but it knows what it is and knows it has to tell the story in a certain way to have the audience go along with it. Oh no, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, it's it's smart, and the thing I also know is the is pacing smart, yeah. is so well done because uh, yeah. the whole movie is one hundred and thirty. It's a pretty, it's a pretty quick movie. Yeah, like Watching. I forgot how. Um, fast and moved like it just went from like one objective to the next one thing they have to do to the next thing to the next thing yeah. to the next thing and it's um i, I kind of wish it took it taking a little bit more time to like develop some of the characters on the ship and trinity and neo's relationship because i know they kind of sprout that at the end yeah it's just like, like yeah, it's just at the end it happens like oh they're in love because they're both attractive and, like, i guess yeah it happens in movies <laughs> and um and you believe it Mostly, but yeah, I wish at the same time you you had like a conversation with them where you see them actually talking to each other. Yeah, and um, but, but that's fine. I mean, it just it, it keeps the story moving. Yeah, it does. It does keep the story moving. I, another favorite sequence of mine is like just the scenes in which Morpheus describes what the real world is, mm-hmm. and when Keanu or, or Neo when he wakes up in the pod and he sees all the other humans being drained used mm-hmm. as batteries you know i like that whole sequence and setup and he tells him this is the real world you know you're you're now a battery and keanu waits up and he's like he was like oh he's gonna throw up you know he's so sick and mm-hmm. i don't know just uh, that type of storytelling the dystopian future we're all in pods got me yeah. to thinking i mean we're almost there right Certainly, yeah, sort of. I guess where we are, are in, we? In some way, I feel like this, this movie. I mean, it's a precursor to a lot of things. The internet, that's for sure. Faith and philosophy. Sure. Uh huh. I don't know. It's a precursor to faith and philosophy. No, I was saying. I was saying in faith and philosophy. I feel like oh. as well. Like it has like the way we look at reality now. I know what you mean. And mm-hmm. the simulation theory. That's been going around most recently in the past couple of years. You know, people bring, are bringing up the uh, simulation theory, and people often uh, mention the matrix. Oh, like a simulated reality. Yeah, people often mention the matrix. You know, if we're living in the matrix, where do you think that comes from? That's interesting. That people want to buy into that so badly. Why? Why are they buying into that? Yeah, why is that such a huge thing for them? I mean, it's always been one of th- a thing, right? But it feels like within the past five years, it's exploded, right? Yeah, but like, what is it? Is it like a, 
discontent with the way life is, the options that are available. Yeah. Is that part of it, or is it just sort of like... I would say internet culture, right? The internet culture. Mm -hmm. People talking online. People questioning things. Yeah, but it's not like anything... I feel like people feel helpless about things that are happening around them. So this has to be a simulation. Yeah, or just they they feel helpless lack to, of, yeah. to change, to have a power and agency. Yeah. A lack of faith, it's, a lack of believing that your life is real because you live in, maybe you're not living the life you want to live, like Neo. Yeah. You know, he's working in an right. office. He wants to be a hacker. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's doing things on his desktop computer that are awesome. He's making side money for, like, underground right. ghouls and stuff. So, yeah. you know. And the most 1999 scene ever is when Keanu and, and the ghoul gang, they, they arrive at the club mm -hmm. and like that steampunk club where he meets Trinity and like Rob Zombie's song is playing. I think those kinds you know? of like S and M leather bars were still like things in Berlin and New York or something. Yeah. But it's a very, um, that the aesthetic of this movie, it's very interesting to me. No, it is. Know, a lot of leather, a lot of, you know, yeah, steampunk, man. You know, I don't think that's a steampunk thing, but a lot of steampunk gets steampunk. -y. But back to, your, back to your question, okay? Why are people believing in simulation okay. theory? I would say because I don't know, man. It's it's a mixture of things, probably personal, and then also like this world can't keep getting absurd. So this has to be a game, right? My life is not what it is, so it has to be fake. Also, the idea of purpose. You know, which is something humans have always struggled with, but it feels like now, like our generation specifically, it's a very uh, first... and Gen Z too. Like you have, you know, people questioning, mm -hmm. like what what am I supposed to do with my life when my options are being dwind are dwindling? You know, due to things out of my control. I think it's part of being a hyper being part of a hyper capitalist imperialist culture. Yeah, because I doubt that farmers in power away are going oh do you think we live in a simulated reality man <laughs> exactly. and it's like no just keep telling the land <laughs> they don't give a f they, they i know what you're saying reality. yeah and i feel like with people who just like a, have a phone constantly in their hand exactly like me i feel the same way i'm trying to rid myself of these habits yeah. to not be able to stand the quiet or just be able to look at the wind blowing through a, a tree yeah is something that it's not, you brought that up before yeah you brought probably, that, yeah. but no, to me personally, you brought up the yeah. like people pull out their phones because they want to avoid the minute details or the yeah, their anxieties. Like, I think something. yeah, like in life now, for us. To be honest with you, I look at my phone in public yeah. because if I just stand around and observe things, they look at you weird. Right? People look at me weird. Yeah, it's so weird. I have to pull out my phone in public and stare at it at nothing. I look at cartoon stuff and like Bobby's <laughs> World and like uh -huh. '90s cartoons because. If you have, if you don't have a phone in public in front of you, yeah, like people look at you strangely. Like you have to be some sort of weirdo, right? You know. Mm -hmm. So it, it, yeah. I mean, I agree with you. Like the phones, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, it's a part of like countries like us, Canada, United States, UK, you know, Western industrialized, yeah. Uh, hyper focused on money, on status, on power. Okay. On we sort of live. And the, like that, yeah, parallel reality, and which yeah. is our phones and social mm -hmm. media, and yeah. watching countries thousands of miles away, thousands of miles away being blown up. We have a complete disconnect mm -hmm. to the actual human cost, mm -hmm. to actual other human beings that live differently from us. That yeah, that's true. I don't know. It's just it's like, like that's that the problem. That problem is far away. Yeah, and I'm here, and we feel so alone and isolated. Yeah, and that's why I was bringing up the pods uh -huh. in that sequence where he wakes up, because that's where we are. That's where we're heading toward. Mm -hmm. You know, the phone. That's just the beginning, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, we're right. gonna be in those pods eventually. You've talked about you know virtual reality, sex dolls, etc. These I kinds have of... uh, not on the podcast, but outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. outside the podcast. <laughs> yes, but yeah, yeah, these these are things that are going to happen eventually, yeah. and they're going to take over people's lives. Because I mean, it already is. Yeah. You look at social media, and that to me is the matrix. Mm -hmm. That to me is like, to me, that's such a foreign reality. But to some people, that is what their reality is. Yeah, and like I've met people where 
maybe on their Instagram. This was back when I used to have social media. I would be friends with them on their, on the gram or yeah, only on the gram. And like, they would have like over 500 followers Mm -hmm. and I would only have probably like three. Right. I'm just speaking lowly just to say a random number, but, (laughs) but yeah, well, our friends like, I like, and I would look at them and be like, how does this person have 500 followers who are in person? They can't even hold a conversation. Right. They never told me a joke that made me like laugh. They never told yeah. me a good story. There's nothing human about them. I don't admire anything about them. Yeah. How could they be living a life with 500 followers? I was thinking about that the other day, which is um, we have social media now where, where we're not us, but people are followed by thousands of other people who they don't know they we're don't complete strangers know. and remember that to me is scary i don't want yeah i, I don't know it makes me uncomfortable but when facebook started out you were friends but with people who you who knew you right knew. you would yeah. request yeah a friend status or whatever <laughs> happened yeah. with people you you knew you hadn't met before you had some idea of how tall they were what they yeah looked like. what they look like in person yeah and i got twitter instagram youtube just being followed by people who yeah who, you have no idea you what they no look idea. like if they're even human their profile picture <laughs> is of some anime dude yeah <laughs> and um yeah. i think it's to humanize a lot of the interactions because you don't feel like yeah. you're talking to another person anymore no and you wouldn't say this to their face you're no. just being in some cases you're either being like an asshole yeah or you're you're thinking, yeah, this idea of somebody, but you don't exactly. know who they actually are, and this extends to celebrities, especially now. Yeah, and it's strange that that idea of that's the way we used to look at celebrities, like yeah. twenty, thirty years ago. Mm-hmm. Like we would be like, they're they're this thing that I have an image of, but now it's like we're looking at regular people like that. Yeah, it's and disturbing. Just like they're and those people are bending their lives to an idealized form of physical beauty. Yeah. And also the way they live their lives. Like it's a constant thing of, you know, it's it's a having like a, a going to brunch and then taking pictures and, ha- and not taking pictures anymore. That's that's a, that's a foul pas for some reason now. But you do, you make Instagram stories about <laughs> this cool new brunch place you went to <laughs> or how you're going on a hike. Yeah. And you saw this cool bird. Yeah. And uh, it's just creating constant entertainment and distraction it's, for yeah. people. I just, yeah, I agree. It's and weird. It's just, you're just sort of buying into this fake, again, it's it's a, not a simulation exactly. You're buying into this fake image that isn't real, that is manufactured, yeah. that you want for, like the people who are watching, they want that for their own lives. They're sort of jealous. They're also sort of admiring you. They sort of want to be you and they hate you at the same time. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, you're reminding me like Neo, like when when Morpheus and Neo are first in the Matrix, mm-hmm. and he tells them, "Look at your hair; it's different. Look at your clothes; are different. Mm-hmm. This is an image that you put together, you know." And that's sort of where we are right now, where we portray, where people portray this image online, and it's not who they are really in person. Yeah, you know, it's just um, people like having the attention of someone else. They like if if their lives isn't aren't being documented somehow through pictures or in yeah. stories or videos, then it's not real. Then their life doesn't have any value if it's not being yeah. seen by other people. I remember. I think I forgot who told me, but like, or no, maybe I heard on a podcast. They were just saying that like the people who are posting now will be forever remembered, and the people who are not on social media will for, be forgotten. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, yeah, I guess that's one way to look at it. But, I mean, like, who wants to be remembered? I mean, to be honest with you, I don't I don't kind of really care if I'm yeah. remembered and or also this sort not of, remembered. The stream of constant content is just, like, they're not going to be going, like, 50 but, years from now. They're not going to be, like, looking at the classics, yeah. like, oh, remember that poster? <laughs> remember that YouTube guy back 50 years ago? He had some good stuff. The idea, though, of constant content from, like, a Facebook or Instagram profile mm-hmm is like disturbing to me like everybody's their own tv station right everybody's their own like website Mm -hmm. brand you know and i'm just like that's not a way to live you know and like when i watch something like the matrix i'm like dude we're halfway there yeah you know we don't have bad guys agents chasing us in suits and telling and we don't have like morpheus telling us we're the one but like yeah we're not awake yet 
Yeah. Then again, there's that. Yeah, there's that. We're not. I've heard that one. We're not. Wait, you're in the simulation, man. And I'm mm-hmm. just like, dude, come on, let me live my life. It's hard enough dude. already. Just. Yeah. Don't, I don't make me know, think man. about another dude, reality. When I meet people who are on like social media and, and the gram and all that stuff, I'm like, dude, you have way more power than me because I don't. I looked at that stuff and I'm just like, dude, that's like, that's the next like crack pipe. That's the next like porno addiction. I think like when we look back in like 10, 15 years, we're going to be like, man, we were on social media too much. We had to have yeah, PSAs on the internet saying, yeah, like, you know, you're on your phone too much, you know? And like, but man, have you ever told somebody like, I, we, I kind of went over this last week, but like where, where you tell them like, Hey, can you put down your phone? Like, I'm trying to tell you something. Mm-hmm. They look at you like you've just insulted like their mom or dad or something. Yeah. Like it's insane. People I think a lot of people so offended. I think a lot of people are, um, it's a, it's a, conflict because they know that maybe they might remember when they're they're talking to their mom or something and her, their mom was like put your phone down i'm trying to talk to you oh yeah there's that uh but the thing is i'm trying to get i'm not explaining that well but they know they shouldn't be overly focused on this reality yeah. they have the, on their phones they yeah. should be the person in front of them because that's always a richer more substantial yeah, interaction. Yeah, it's exactly like pornography, the way we view sure. pornography now. Uh-huh. Like, we're like, we know we shouldn't be doing this. Mm-hmm. We, I should be out there looking for a partner. Mm-hmm. Or but so, yet, yeah. I'm or huddled just, over a computer. <laughs> you know right, what I mean? Right, just looking for sex. You don't have to look for a yeah. partner because it's a natural thing that human beings do. Yeah. But for some reason, it's just... Um, it's more convenient. When we can get this these uh, l- uh, little supplies of dopamine that are so easily accessed either yeah. to like porn or posting something on Instagram. We feel like this jolt of like, Ooh, and like someone likes the picture on Instagram and you're like, Ooh, I got 15 likes. It's approval. And it's like, it's yeah, weird. it's like, I'm, I'm worth something. I'm alive. People like me. Yeah. And if you don't always have that, or if you like hook yourself up to that supply. Yeah. It's like an IV or something. Exactly. <laughs> And then if you're not getting that, then you're like going cold turkey on something that you that used to keep you engaged and happy. Constantly, yeah. And now if you, yeah, it's just, a, and you're right. I hope that in 15 years or whatever, there's like PSA is telling you to like not spend that much time on your phone because it's been proven scientifically somehow yeah. that's not good for you. I hope that happens, but it seems like it's getting worse, honestly. It is getting worse. And that's why I think we're heading near the pods like Neo, <laughs> you know, and I just feel like, the philosophy behind this movie and what it represents i mean at the time i don't know if that's what the wachowskis meant but looking at it now i'm just like dude this movie was like so ahead of its time it knew where we were heading definitely yeah you know even like the ideas of reincarnation you know the messiah you know the failure of religion in modern society like how in america there's no we're not united by you know, like Christianity or Catholicism, Judaism, you know, or what I'm trying to say is that like religion mm. in modern society has dwindled, especially with our generation and younger, you know, it feels like it's gone away, you know? Yeah, so who I do mean, we hail now? You I know? mean, it just seems like Christianity, Catholicism, especially it's just, they fall behind with the times. Yeah. And that's what it, that exactly. That's what it feels like. Yeah. They feel like, uh, yeah, they can't adapt fast enough can't adapt. to what's happening to what people Yeah wants not even they, what they need what they want from uh, so what's in place of that oh yeah again like i don't want to sound like an old person who's like oh phone social media the internet it's just like what's in place of religion is just you know good old capitalism That's, yeah status power yeah. how many followers do i have the, pro, the profile brand image. am i going exactly yeah am yeah. i going on vacation like yeah. you, you hear all kinds of crazy stories about <laughs> influencers who go on vacation and do all sorts of crazy shit yeah. just to like have a constant stream yeah, of content. Constant. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, it seems like increase increasingly not atheist. It just seems like it's it's borderline like uh, sort of agnostic. Sort I of what I was about to say not even agnostic. I just think it's sort of like this nihil. Is it nihilism? Yeah. Sort, sort of, of like we don't hail anything, man. You yeah, know, it's, it's just, just like, sort of like. This weird limbo state of like, con- like consuming like money, yeah. consuming sex, consuming like bad thoughts. I don't know, yeah. dude. It's, it's weird. Bad thoughts. You know? well, it's like human beings. We think we're so special and smart, but the thing is exactly. that it, it seems like I think like Morpheus. It's hard to say this. Sort of. I am not even gonna. 
not going to be able to explain this the right way, but try your best. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> when people had a, something to believe in, whatever that religion is, they were able to function better in their yeah. lives, knowing that there's something after dying, that there's something higher that they yeah. work towards. Yeah. And now that people don't have that, yeah. even, you know, Catholics who didn't really do the whole Catholic thing, they just went to church every other week. Yeah. They still had that belief that, there is something there. If they could confess eventually and, you know, be yeah. a generally good person yeah. or inoffensive, they could still get into heaven and see their family again and yeah. all that stuff. But now yeah. that we, all that are all our rewards now are earthbound and they're short lived and we constantly have to chain, ch chase after yeah, what whatever they are. that is. And it gets exhausting, right? <laughs> like, like, it reminded me of like Il Bidone, like the peasants in the country. Yeah. They were poor, but they believed in God so much. Yeah, there's you know? a lot of misuse, like Catholic Church, bad history, right? Awful history of just completely abusing um, all their followers. And just sort of twisting them around whichever way meant more money. But anyway, <laughs> I'm so bitter about being Catholic. It's crazy. I am too. You got me thinking, but go ahead. <laughs> no, sorry. I, I went off on a whole thing. But yeah, I mean, even though religion can be used, as Mark way. said, opium for the masses to keep the poor from revolting and cutting the heads off of all every single billionaire alive, it's... um. It was still something that was sort of a balance for people. I sort of kept them steady. It was this weird compass. Yeah. It's very strange. Yeah. Yeah. And I think for like religion to have a place in society like America, I mean, it's such an archaic idea nowadays. It feels like, you know, what we look up to, what we want to be, our moral compasses are kind of like distorted. I don't know. It's very hard to be uh a person that doesn't look up to like i don't know like it's it's very hard to have a good moral compass nowadays i think given all the information that's being shown to you through like media and phones I mean, you know a lot of people think that being a good person is just not doing anything bad but that doesn't make you a good person you're just not doing anything bad you're just sort of like a neutral if that yeah sort of entity who just doesn't fight for anything good and doesn't fight for anything bad either just there being just inoffensive there. i don't know and the thing is that the things that are considered bad or good or change with the times they're changing every day it's yeah. so strange yeah. you know what's accepted and what's not accepted and i feel like with our generation when we looked at like the matrix this is a movie that's sort of like telling us to wake up but from what though i don't know and i think the wachowskis did a great job of like not only making an action movie, but actually like making you think about what's real and what's not, what's important. Sure. It's not important. What you accept and what you don't. What yeah. What you think is important to not. Yeah. Definitely. And um, also, it's a pretty cool action movie, I think. I think so. I think the bullet time sequences are amazing. Yeah, they're still, still look good. Special effects. And they still hold up. Yeah. Like, when I look at it, I'm like, this is awesome. The slow motion-y, mm -hmm. you know, Neo, you know, going back and like dodging the bullets like the first scene where you meet Trinity and she does that kick where she jumps up and yeah. goes slow motion and kicks that cop yeah. through the doorway. Yeah, that's awesome. Or like even when they're jumping from roofs in the yeah. beginning, they're chasing, they're chasing Trinity. Yeah. You know, and like the, like I would say the action sequence that it's most well known for is the shoot up scene, you know, in that building. In the lobby. In the lobby. Yeah. You know, they just pull out all these like crazy amount of guns and beneath a trench coat and just annihilate, you yeah, know, I mean, security guards mm -hmm. and the SWAT. It feels um, like I remember watching this movie. I think I said at the beginning of the podcast when I was like seven. Yeah. And just being completely enraptured by how cool this movie was. That's in terms of like not only the world. Yeah. And Neo being cool, but like the actual aesthetic of it. Of yeah, the, no, yeah. Of the, the black leather. The blacks, sunglasses. the greens, the grays, the, the cools, uh -huh. sunglasses that Neo wears. Right, and it's just like, and the guns, just like imagining shootouts in my head, just like <laughs> killing see, random security guards. <laughs> like, like I see, pretended I was Neo, and like, ooh. No, you see what I mean? Like, uh -huh. that's how, like, when we were growing up, these action sequences had guns. Yeah. We were given toy guns as boys growing right. up. So we're running around, 
you know, but now, now it's different, man. Now you see a kid with a toy gun. You're just like, oh man, like things have changed so much. You know, we were talking about it before. It feel it feels like now in America. Well, in America, you could ask anybody what America means to them, and it's just like a Rorschach test. You yeah, know? it's just like it means so many different things. Yeah, the chore- choreography though, this movie by Yuen sure. Wu Ping. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. You know, just the Tai Chi scene, the um, the scene between Morpheus and Keanu training. Mm-hmm. That yeah, also, where yeah. they fly around, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's uh, Wachowskis don't get a lot of appreciation. Like, I don't hear people talk about them for the way they stage action, but they're great at it. No, you, you don't hear that. I think we take them for granted, actually. Definitely. If I, a doubt, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I haven't heard anybody bring up the Wachowskis in a while. And, you know, I, I know it's because of Speed Racer. Speed Racer. Cloud Atlas. Cloud Atlas. I know Speed yeah. Racer, though, really just disappointed a lot of people. But I think Speed Racer's worth a second look. Yeah, a lot of people uh, say it's a great movie. You know, especially now, it feels like I think Speed Racer would... It, it has that it has that Scott Pilgrim feel where I'm... Where I'm you look at it and you go, like, if this movie were made now, it'd be a giant success. Mm-hmm. You know, but I think the color scheme and palette of that movie was a bit too much. The action sequences were a bit, it was too green screen. I, think. I haven't seen it yet, but Speed Racer. I hear a lot of good things and I look forward to it because, you know, I rewatched all the Matrix movies and they were all great. Oh, I you got, did? I, yeah. Oh, okay. I'd, Re- reloaded. Before, yeah. I love, reloaded, I love reloaded a lot. Reloaded yeah. was fun. It's great. It's great action. It's like, I feel like uh, if all the other action movies that sort of bore me were directed like this, I wouldn't get bored then because it's just like awesome like it is awesome the highway chasing in that, that movie that's what I was about to say, is yeah. just incredible it's yeah. like completely like the way it's fought out the way it all connects together yeah it has sort of like a roller coaster sort of you know like yeah um three act structure to it in a way yeah that builds up to a big climax yeah sort of like a piece of music in a way it is like a piece of music i think the main problem though the reason why it reloaded and re- like revolutions weren't a like huge success. I think it's because like they just took too much time off. I know they had to film them back to back and they probably weren't mm-hmm. expecting the first matrix to be such a giant success. Maybe. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know. Even though they had like 65 billion in the movie, mm-hmm. it feels like they took too much time off. Like four years is a long time. Maybe, you know, um, I think it's just people expected something that they didn't yeah. want to make. They expected, like, The Matrix again, over yeah, and over. Yeah, right, exactly. But it's like a story, though. It's like an anime. It's a manga. Yeah. It's like a series, you know? What I noticed about watching this first movie is that, yeah, it seems incomplete without the other two movies. It does. It, no, it does. Like, yeah. after, like, at the end of the movie, I was like, that's it? Yeah. I was like, wait, it just ends here? Why do I remember? Oh, that's the second one. Right. Oh, it's the third one. Uh, it is uh, very unique to the trilogy. Like, it, it's very, like, you have to watch them all together, I think. Yeah. In order to fully understand, like the whole, like you know, concept and the details behind the story, but it feels like, yeah, it feels incomplete. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't say that much about other trilogies I've seen, but like, right, <laughs> you know, I I feel I feel like, yeah, when it was done and I was seeing him fly in the air, I was like thinking of another action sequence. I was like, oh, that's a part of Revolutions, I think. Oh, damn, yeah. you know. I also think it's really cool that they ended this movie with. Uh... Call Mike a bomb by Rage Against the Machine. Yeah, such a '90s thing to that, do. I was about to say that's like that was it, man. Yeah. Rage Against the Machine. That's like that's the time, man. '99. Yeah. It fits thematically with everything. It does. Yeah. About. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, what else was I gonna talk about? Yeah, the whole sequence where they're gonna spring Morpheus out from the agents. Yeah. They're interrogating him, trying to get codes and to he, the... And Hugo Weaving's like, you're a disease. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> he, it, the idea he talks about that human beings were sort of first fed a perfect utopia. I was about to bring that up. But they were, went crazy. They couldn't handle it. They didn't want that. They wanted some. They oh. wanted a world, 1999. They had, they had everything. They, yeah. We, we, humans had everything. AI was, you know... Yeah, like heaven, right? Like It was heaven. Everything was perfect. Yeah. But they couldn't... They, they couldn't handle it. They went crazy. They yeah. lost their minds. Humans always want to f- mess things up, man. And it's that's, just in our nature. We can't have utopia. No, because someone has to like want more power. Yeah. Someone's going to get jealous of something else. Yeah. yeah it's like, we, yes, human beings are just very conflict-oriented. 
that we can't ever seemingly get along with anybody else no. who might be one degree different than us. Or you're like Tony Montana, like in the Scarface episode. Yeah. First you get the money, then you get the power, then you get the women. Yeah, it's about it's a very dominant sort of impulse that some human beings have where they feel like they have to control, they have to have power. Control. That's have a big to one. Have some sort of Yeah. Control. Yeah. Control I think humans just want to control things. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing that now, I mean, with a lot of like social media and big tech, you know, control, you know. People want to control this, control that. Mm-hmm. You know, and then, and then it's just like it's a natural human instinct to want to have some sort of control over or your rules, life. Rules, you know, something. Yeah, know. That, that too. But as a human being, you want control over y- yourself and your environment. That's true. And um, people will do anything to get a sense of control, control over what's around them, over how their life is going. That's true. If they don't have that, they yeah, they start to lose their minds a little bit. No, yeah, I agree. It's so spooky this movie. Yeah, and it's it's uh it, um anyway it's getting back to like a lot of the love for this movie seems nostalgic for me. But even then, if if I watched this now, I still would think it's a great movie. No, yeah, I felt the same way. I felt both. I felt nostalgic, and then I also felt like this still holds up. Yeah, the action sequences like Trinity on the the hel- hanging from the helicopter. Right, that whole going s- into that building and you know like. Yeah, it was amazing. Like watching that as a young boy, just <laughs> yeah, sort of like this in T two Terminator two, dude. Sure, it's amazing, great stuff. Yeah, but um, the scene where uh, Morpheus jumps into Neo's arms and Neo's like, "Oh no, he's not gonna make it," yeah. and he ties himself. And then every time I saw that as, as a child, I would be in suspense. I'd be like, "Yeah, is he gonna make it? Is he yeah. gonna make it?" And it's just like a great. When a filmmaker can do that to you, make you want to wish for a certain outcome. That's true. Like I hope. I hope this happens. He doesn't bottle his death. I hope Neo yeah. catches him. And then when Trinity, as you you mentioned, she uh, she's not gonna ma- be able to make it out of the helicopter in time before it crashes into the building. Yeah. And so he has to like hold onto the rope to make yeah. sure she doesn't fall. All of that is just still very suspenseful, even now, and exciting to watch. It is. Or even like the last showdown between uh, Hugo Weaving and Keanu. Yeah. And the bullets. Love it, yeah. The bullets coming out. Like, yeah, I love that sequence, you know. And maybe he is the one, you know, like, me. I think he might be the one, mm-hmm. you know. Or even like little moments in this movie, like, did you see her? And Keanu's like, who? It's like the woman in the red dress. <laughs> <laughs> I like that guy. Yeah, he dies too too soon. He does die too soon. What the hell, Mouse? Joe Pantoleon. Joe dude, Pants. Dude, those side characters: Mouse, Pantoleon. Tank, yeah, uh, Switch, APAC. Mm-hmm. Beautiful man. Yeah, I wish we had more time with those characters. I know, but at the same time, does I, am I misremembering, or does Monica Bellucci come out in like the other sequels? Yeah, she which does. one? Both. Okay, I was trying to remember. Yeah. She's yeah. in a small role. Yeah. Sort of thankless role. I know. That's what I was like vaguely remembering. I was like, she's in this movie, right? I was like, which one is she in? I was like. Yeah, she's in like the next two. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, these characters, even though they're not on screen for a long time, they make an impression on you no you they do them. you care about them just because yeah they're there yeah especially when like joe panzaleone was character cypher when he's unplugging uh-huh. it's a beautiful scene man and you're like no who's he gonna unplug next who's he gonna unplug next you know yeah he's good at being that sort of a uh, casual evil oh he's great at being evil like memento memento sopranos oh yeah sopranos Dude, bound he kills a hooker in the sopranos like yeah. oh my god that scene when he kills her i was just like jesus <laughs> But yeah, he can play that like sly, you know, sketchy character in such a great way, you know. Oh yeah, he's a great actor. Um, wish I saw him more. I don't know where he is. Where you at, Joe? Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, if anyone hasn't watched Bound yet, yeah, I encourage it. I haven't it's seen great. Bound. I gotta it's watch great. that one. That look. I I looked it up, and it, that looks like one of those like quintessential low budget '90s movies yeah, where you're like, looking at it and you go like. How did this get made? But it was the 90s. They're giving out money like crazy. Yeah, it was like a $6 million movie. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Where are, like, when I think of, like, best movie decades, I always think the 70s and then the 90s. Because, mm-hmm. like, so many small movies were getting made. Mm-hmm. And, like, you looked at them and you go, like, how is the hell is this getting made, you know? 
Right, it's just, uh, yeah. I mean, you gotta like make it for a low, like make a crazy idea for a low budget and then hope yeah. you make at least what you spent on it back. And then you get a chance to make another one, hopefully. But uh, it's hard. People are playing it safe now, I feel. Oh, most definitely. I know. This one, I mean, The Matrix, though, like it, it, we talked about how it made us think about reality and everything, but, you know, the simulation theory behind this, I can see why people believe in it. I don't believe in it, but, mm -hmm. you know, I can see why. Yeah, that sort of like 80s and 90s Generation X sort of interrogation of the way we live has went away in the next decade after yeah, 9 what's up with that it's just like that's what i was saying it went away with our generation too and yeah. gen z where we don't even I think question it's picking back up now at least it it probably is yeah. but it's weird though if you start to question these things like i've questioned these things like what you just said you know like um reality social media mm-hmm you know, I know this is reality. I feel like this is reality. Mm. But then I also look at, like, the compliance of our generation and Gen Z, and I question that. Mm -hmm. And then people say, you're overthinking it. You are being an old man. Sort of. I think Right? But then I'm like, it's good to question these things, though, because the previous generations questioned the compliance, and we got good things out of it. And it feels like with our generation below, that it's all compliant. It's I, all like I think I, it's, I don't know. Go ahead. Disagree with you that go ahead. we're not. I think compared to like what eight years ago, ten years ago, I feel like there wasn't all this awareness of how capitalism strips you as a human being. That is true. Destroys you as a person. Is used to control you, so the wealth can be siphoned up to the top one percent billionaires yeah corporations but that's what i'm saying though like we're so much aware of that now that 10 years ago no one was talking that's what about I'm, that's really. what i'm saying like i would question these things and yeah i would be like why aren't you thinking about these why aren't you thinking about this and people would look at me funny yeah know, sideways look i'm like no, no no i'm asking good questions even. right yeah you know i think that's picking up again now. i think no yeah hopefully are, it is are critical I, of the way we structure our society and the way we live and then also just not believing everything on the internet where were we okay. with the Chelsea's? you were mentioning the oscars yeah they won a bunch of oscars they won a whole bunch of yeah. oscars visual effects sound yeah and some might say you know they might have lost their some way might say. you know but i don't know i know they're doing the fourth matrix mm -hmm. you know i don't know if it'll be good neo's is back right keanu yeah trinity Man, it, it's good. It's good that they're coming I back. I wonder what's going to happen since it seemed like the last movie was, uh, you know, he just closed the book on the whole story. It did. I thought it was over. I honestly, like, I think they should leave it alone. Yeah, if they're going to make a new one, it should be new people, uh, entirely new cast. I don't know. They should just leave it alone. Some things should be left alone. Yeah. I think, but I don't know. I mean, just. Uh, but you know, it's it's filmmaking. It's Hollywood. Can't judge. You know, they can't just leave things alone, but. No, I think you know. just like what makes this movie so special still is that it's just a good story well told. It is. Yeah, it's just like well written, well directed. And you know, to make a good movie or like an average movie, it just takes like a lot of luck and work. And to make a great movie, it's just like, you know, an act of God yeah. sometimes. Yeah, especially something like this, though, is a pop culture centerpiece yeah. for many years. It's just everything has to come together. Yeah. Right people. It came at the right time, too. Right before Phantom Menace that kicked off the next Star Wars series. Yeah, it came out. You know, a Star Wars had before, like right? a... What happened? It came out a couple months a couple before. A couple months before it, yeah. yeah. But Phantom Menace showed up like two two months later in anticipation and disappointed Star Wars fans. But, yeah. you know, I mean, there was such a layover for Star Wars. I mean, it was like 20 years or something. It feels like every time that happens, like with like... What was the last one that came out? The Force Awakens? People are just so hungry I guess for a new Star Wars that they immediately praise it and then they think about it for a second guess, and they're like, yeah. "Oh no, it's not that great." I guess. I think I think more franchises should take time off, though. Sure. Yeah. You know, the more mystery, the better. I mean, just, I don't know. just like, forget about franchises. Just do a new 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 concept every movie. You know, I'm okay with franchises too, like as long as it's yeah. something different and refreshing. You know, and then also like you got you had the Lord of the Rings come out two years later, another franchise. Yeah. Well, 
Anyway, I mean, like, I'm, what I was trying to get to is, like, I want to encourage people to watch the the whole trilogy and not just the first it one. It works better with the trilogy, I think. Yeah, and it's come, it's like, people, it's, like, such, it's, like, so much in the water that people don't like the sequels. But people who haven't watched the sequels should just try to watch those movies with an open mind and see that see them as a complete piece, all three of them put together. And yeah. not as separate movies. Yeah. I think Revolutions and Reloaded came out the same year. One yeah, spring, they did. one it's fall. Crazy. Yeah. I was lucky enough to see both of them, too, in theaters. It's a great experience. You remember yeah. the Powerade ads? Yeah, the that's ages. right. They did have those, right? <laughs> I miss when movies were tied to, like... Yeah, you do. Like, brands and, like, ads that were, like... You'd have, like, like weird advertisements. I don't know. It's kind of like Six Flags on Coca-Cola cans in California. Stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I remember those ads and uh, we got like the Motorola phones. Yeah, the Motorola phone. Yeah, it's crazy stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I don't know. All right. Lost well, my train of thought. No, it's okay. Check out Speed Racer. Let us know if you guys were watching Check see if it's Bound. good. And Bound, yeah. The Wachowskis are amazing. Uh huh. Joe Pantoliano, the rebirth of Keanu. Let's get to Keanu real before we leave. So Keanu hit this weird spell, dude. Okay, so like after Revolutions, he kind of didn't do movies for like, like four. Like I, I remember he didn't. He was nowhere to be seen. Then he did like Street Kings, David Ayer Street Kings, which I enjoyed a lot. Hmm. And then like it was just weird. Like he kind of floated. It felt like for like sixteen years. Let's look him up. See what's what he's got. I think he tried to um, branch out and do different roles and not yeah. always try to be like the action guy. You know, from like, well, it's okay, like Point Break, Speed, then The Matrix. He was trying to like get into something else. He'd like try to do rom- rom-coms. Yeah, he was like, he kind of just floated and started doing other things. It was strange. The Replacements. There you go. The the hardball? Hardball. Yeah. Something's got to give. Supporting role, Constantine. Constantine, it's another one. Supporting role in Thumbsucker, Mike oh, Mills' oh, first right. movie. He plays a, I think he plays a teacher in Thumbsucker. Doctor, dude, he just sh- doctor. Yeah, he just shows up out of nowhere in that movie. Yeah, I totally forgot. You could, yeah, you could be like a character actor if, if yeah, if, if he the yeah. whole action hero thing didn't work out for him. Um, you know, it says gravitas, not gravitas, like charisma. You know, the old movie star thing where you just watch. No, he has it. Yeah. And you're like, oh, the, yeah, I believe there's a movie around them. And it's not limited to, like, being attractive. It's someone who has something special. Yeah, it's the specialness. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, he sort of did, a, like, a lot of uh, indie movies, Scanner Darkly. That's in the, We should do a Scanner Darkly. Sure. Uh, Lake House, yep. Street Kings, yep. Day of the Earth Stood Still, which wasn't yep. very successful. No, it wasn't. I haven't seen it. Yeah, and trying to, like, Man of Tai Chi is the first movie he directed. Yeah. The only movie still. And yeah, he did a couple of movies that weren't that successful before John Wick. Yeah, it was this weird point where he was just trying out different things and floating. It was weird. Yeah, I mean, like... And he would pop up and he'd be like, oh my God, is that Keanu? You'd be like, you know? Yeah, like he, like, he, apparently he made so much money from Matrix, other movies he made, that he didn't have to, like, just take movies. Yeah, we will take whatever. So he just took, like... And then, like, also what happened with, like, Carrie Ann Moss. Like, after yeah. she did Revolutions, all of a sudden, like, I remember her, like, one of the next big ones she did... She did, like, Memento and everything, but, like, after Revolutions, mm-hmm. she did, like, Suburbia, where she was just playing a mom. Disturbia. <laughs> Disturbia. Yeah. My bad. Disturbia. She did Disturbia, and she was a mom, and I was like, oh, man, is she already, like, being typecasted as a mom? That was quick. Yeah, you I don't know? know. Yeah, she kind of, like, disappeared a little bit. It was, Yeah, I remember, but. Good for her if that's what she wants to do. Yeah. She just wants to, like, have a family and just relax and chill, you know? And, uh, oh, yeah, getting back to Keanu, he, like, yeah, after the John Wick sort of revitalized his career, he went back to, like, doing sort of, you know, indie movies, like, not even, like, indie movies, but, like, Knock Knock, yeah, Eli Roth, Neon Demon, Nicholas Winding Refn, small stuff. And then he just got back to doing John Wick and other yeah. movies like that. No, it's always good to see Toy Story 4, of course, Duke Kaboom, R.I.P., and, um... Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you for All listening. Right, well. <laughs> for, uh, another episode. Of oh, movies are good. Yeah. Ran out of energy. I check guess. it out. Check it out on HBO Max, DVD, steampunk genre. Viva la steampunk genre, man! It was. It was. It's good to see this movie again.
But anyway, guys, um, if you did not hear at the beginning of the podcast, <laughs> what? Remember at the beginning we were talking about backlog episodes? Oh, yeah. yeah we check have them a lot out. Of episodes you can check out. Yeah. And um, yeah, I would like to get fan mail again if there's anyone out there. <laughs> Um, uh, it's, it's, it's been dry since the last time. Um, but yeah, if anyone has any fan mail or suggestions, any ideas for the show, suggestions, recommendations, comments, questions, movies. anything like that, you can drop a message on Instagram, YouTube, or the Gmail. And what's the Gmail again? Movies are dead. It's, yeah. Like the podcast name is spelled movies are dead. At gmail.com. At gmail.com. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much no, for listening. Just look we'll, for it. Yeah. We're on Spotify. We're on... Uh, we will broadcast next time. We're on the radio. Or, uh, yeah. Next Not time. on the radio, no. Next time on the internets. Oh, we're on the radio, though. All right, buddy. All right. Bye. Bye. Oh, now the next guy, I can keep on talking by <laughs> myself. One-man show. Ugh, finally, relief.